Hey, what's up everybody? Back with another day of showing you how I'm going to build my food plan for the day so that I can make sure to hit my caloric and macronutrient goals, my protein, carbs, fats, all that stuff. I've built most of today already. We're going to go ahead and finish this together on the app, My Macros Plus. It's an awesome app for tracking your food. It costs a couple of bucks on all of the app stores. I'll put a link down below so you can get straight to it, whether you've got iOS or Android. Well worth the couple of dollars if it helps you stay on track. I do this every single day myself, so my thought was, why not record it, throw it up on YouTube. Maybe it'll help somebody else figure out how to build theirs as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get this started. Do me a favor, if you find this video to be helpful, please hit the like button on it. Maybe even the subscribe like while you're here. Like I said, I do these every single day. Like, let's, let's do them together. Let's do them at the same time. So... Um, I have a three-step process every day whenever I build my food plans. Now, I've got a flexible schedule, so I build my food plans daily. Uh, you might have a different type of schedule that's not as flexible, where you have to build a plan for the whole week. Uh, either way, this app works great for all of that. But for me, because I've got flexibility in my schedule, I can choose when I eat. Um, I make mine fresh every day, but the concepts are the same, whether you're doing it every day or once a week. And so my three-step system that I put together for myself for the sake of simplicity is, first off, um, I put in, just to get the whole thing started, I put in my daily staples. My staples are things for me which are basically the same things every single day, which is great because then I don't have to think about it. I just say, okay, let's start off. Let's get this going. And for me, my staples are my pre and my post workout meals. And the reason they're my staples is because they're essentially the same thing every day, a, a protein drink. On both of them and you can see here my pre-workout I've got an apple protein this is an isolate protein that I've got and then I've got another protein drink and some gummy bears for my post workout and that is of course because um, I want some carbs on my post workout to get a little bit of the uh, uh, energy back in my system so that's my step one put in your staples whatever you are going to do the same every single day put that in first and if you don't do something the same every day I highly recommend finding some way to do this it helps just, like I said, it helps you get started on your builds and it helps take some of the guesswork out of it too, which is nice. So then step two, well, now what you're going to do is you're going to add in any cravings that you've got that you want to eat for the day. If you wake up and you're thinking, I want to eat a ding dong. Well, this is where you put the ding dong into your plan. Now, the ding dong may not last. It may not make it through the plan. But what I try to do is I try to find ways to put my cravings in to my plan, especially when you're like when you're trying to like lose weight and you're trying to cut food back. It's easy to feel unmotivated because you feel like you are depriving yourself. So by adding in these um, opportunities for cravings, you can get some of these cravings in your daily plans and just work around them. And um, it'll help you keep your sanity and probably help you stay on track. I didn't wake up today with any sort of cravings. If I did, I would have put them in right now. But uh, whether you do, whether you don't, once you're done with step two, you go to the last step, step three, which is now you just are going to start building your plan beginning with the first meal of the day that you're going to eat and you build it for the rest of the day. Now, if you've got a very structured schedule, you can probably build this ahead of time because you know exactly when you're going to eat and you know exactly what your window of time is going to be when you're eating. But for me, there are some days I don't eat till two in the afternoon. There's some days I'll, I'll eat at 10 in the morning. And the danger there is if I eat at 10 in the morning, that's fine. But if I don't eat till two and I've already made my plan earlier because I thought I was going to eat at 10, well, I just lost four hours. And that plan was based off of me eating during those four hours. So for me personally, with my crazy schedule, I prefer to make my first meal track it, and then that way I know exactly how much of a window I've got for the rest of the day, right? And so um, my first meal, breakfast, here's what I did today. I actually didn't eat till like 12 or 12.30, so I kind of did a lunch for breakfast. Did some turkey pepperoni, just ate it straight out the bag because I'm uh, <laughs> lazy, I think is the right word. Got a couple of stuffed jalapeno, or stuffed jalapeno um, olives. Got eight ounces of turkey meatballs. This is just ground meatball or ground turkey meat, put it in one ounce balls and throw it in the uh, oven. And then I've got uh, a cheese stick. This is just a cheese stick like my kids would eat. So very basic breakfast, first meal. But what you have to look at here is my fat content was 33 grams on my first meal. Normally my breakfast, like with liquid egg whites, it'll be like less than a gram. 
So because I'm starting out my first meal with a pretty heavy dose of fat, I'm going to have to be careful for the rest of the day not to blow my fat grams out um, since I use so many so early in the day. For lunch, what I've done here is a couple of buffalo chicken patties. I've mentioned these a lot of my past meals. These are just vegan patties from Walmart. Throw them in the microwave for two minutes. Throw a little bit of fat-free mozzarella cheese on there and good to go. So a very basic lunch for me. But again, another 12 grams of fat. Got to be careful here. And I've had a snack today, which is a frozen fruit bar, just 15 grams of carbs, nothing big. So I've built my breakfast, my lunch, got a snack, got my staples in. Let's take a look at where that leaves us at for right now. I've got um, 130 total grams of protein remaining, almost 190 carbs. I need to start knocking that down. But I got to be careful because I'm down to 14 grams of, or almost 15 grams of fat that uh, I, I have to play with here, which is not a lot considering I got so much protein and carbs to go. So I got to keep an eye on that. Got about 1,450 total calories remaining before I hit my max, so um, we need to start knocking some of this down. So let's talk about dinner. I'm thinking, because I need to start knocking some carbs down, I'm thinking of what's carb heavy? What can I have that's carb heavy? Well, I'm thinking a bag of Uncle Ben's Minute Rice. Now, that's got something like 70, yep, 70 grams of carbs in it for a pouch. Let's throw that in there. That knocked that carb down real quick. So with dinner, I don't just want to have some rice. I'm going to mix some tuna in with that. You might be saying... That's disgusting, and you might be right, but it's going to fit nicely into my overall plan because it's the hot buffalo tuna, so it's going to mix that all up. I'm going to do two pouches of that tuna just for some extra protein, and what we've done here is with that dinner, the rice and the tuna, I've knocked that down to um, 968 calories remaining, so we knocked off almost 600 calories, which is nice. Still got a lot of protein and carbs to go. The fat was pretty nice there. We didn't really move that too much, just five total grams. But I want to be thinking, what can I eat that is essentially going to be fat-free to help fulfill and, and make this gap up? So let's think about some things that are fat-free. Nope, not yesterday. Um, I'm thinking of fat-free in the sense of like, you know what I'm going to do this evening? I'm going to do a, a cup of bone broth. This is chicken bone broth. You can see here nine grams of protein, 0.5 grams of fat just as a snack, just because I can. I'll throw that in the microwave for one minute and then just drink it down. Um, so let's be thinking here bigger again. I need big because I still got 83 grams of protein to go. Let's do, um, let's see here. How about that ice cream is calling my name. I'm gonna do ice cream. Let's do 101 grams. That seems like a, let's do it at, actually a serving is 94. So let's just do a serving of Oh boy, that fat's going to be a problem. Let's see what that does for one serving. Am I still in the green? Yes, I am, but boy, not by much. I'm going to take that out. Let's not do that. That's going to be a problem if I try to make that work because it's six grams of fat there, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you only got nine left to play with, uh, it's difficult. Let's do some, you know what I'm going to do for a snack this evening? I'm going to do some liquid egg whites um, for like a late night sort of dinner. It's very light. And it's all protein. No carbs, no fats. I'm not going to do two cups. That's going to be too much. Let's do one cup, which is going to be 16 tablespoons as a snack. Knocking those numbers down. And let's do a couple of pieces of Ezekiel bread with that. Let's make this a for real, um, a for real breakfast for, for snack. Let's do two slices. I'm going to toast that. And then I'm going to put some Greek yogurt, flavored Greek yogurt, on that toast. Now let's take a look at what we got. 549 calories remaining. Still got a ways to go on carbs, but I got a nice late night breakfast snack, which is sweet. Um, 235 cal. Oh, I did that again. 549 calories remaining. And here's what I'm going to do. Something I don't typically do. I've really been liking this apple protein. I didn't know if I would. I like it so much. I'm going to do an extra one for a snack. Extra 25 grams of protein that I'm going to drink with that breakfast. And I'm also going to add in something unusual too. I'm going to put in some Pop-Tarts here for a late night snack. I think that's going to work nicely. Let's take a look. I know I've got them in here somewhere because I've had them before. I think I've listed them as Oreo Pop-Tarts. They were around 400 total calories for two of them. And uh, let's see right there. This is one pastry. Let's change that to two and let's see what that does to my overall numbers. That should get me right near where I want to be. It sure does. So the Pop-Tart's going to happen. I didn't get the ice cream, but I'm going to get the Pop-Tart. So I've got my breakfast, I've got my lunch. I'm gonna reorganize this so my dinner shows up next. 
there's my dinner. That's the tuna and the rice for a snack. I've got the fruit bar. I got the, the late night breakfast snack. That's the egg whites, the toast with, with yogurt on it. Got me another protein drink and two pop tarts. Mm, mm, mm. And then of course I got my pre and my post workout staples. If you look at the numbers at the top, it says I've got 80 calories remaining. That's underneath my max. This is a great number. This ended up being right kind of where I'd like it to be. It's not my max. It's about, you know, a hundred less or, or so less. So that looks good. My overall numbers at the top, I'd like to typically see my fat and my protein flip-flopped here, but I'm not going to worry about it because they're pretty close. And uh, this looks good. So the Pop-Tarts were a surprise addition that ended up working out quite nicely. So that's why I built mine for today. Um, th again, the app is called My Macros Plus. A couple of bucks on all the app stores. Links to those are in the description down below. And uh, if you find this to be helpful, please hit like on it. Maybe even the subscribe. I'll be doing another one of these tomorrow and basically every day, all day. And that's it. Thank you all for watching very much. We'll see you on tomorrow's video. Peace out.